Hi, everyone. Welcome to Mental Health Bites. In this podcast, we'll cover timely mental health topics, answer your burning questions, and leave you with a timely wellness tip to improve your mental health every single day. Let's jump right into the timely topic of the day, which is one of my most exciting topics, at least to me personally, which is lucid dreaming. I'm sure some of you might remember this movie years ago called Inception. It was all the rage back then when it came out, and it had all these discussions and applications of lucid dreaming. So what is lucid dreaming? Well, first of all, there is a long history of discussion related to lucid dreaming, and it depends on where you are in the world, but there were different versions of this discussion happening at various places all around the earth. In terms of the Western culture, the first known reference to lucid dreaming appears in the writings of Aristotle in 4th century BCE. Aristotle noted that some people were aware they were dreaming while still in a dream state. And in the 17th century, philosopher and scientist Sir Thomas Brown described lucid dreams in his book, Religio Medici, where he discussed the ability to control dreams. In modern explorations, this term lucid dreaming was coined by Dutch psychiatrist Frederick van Eden in 1913. He used this term to describe the clear and conscious state experienced during such dreams. In the late 20th century, the scientific study of lucid dreaming gained even more momentum, particularly through the work of Dr. Keith Earn and Dr. Stephen LeBurge. And they talked about recording eye movements during lucid dreaming in a sleep lab in 1975, which confirmed that lucid dreaming was a true and verifiable phenomenon. So there are different types of lucid dreams. And a lucid dream essentially is a dream when the dreamer becomes aware that they're dreaming. And this awareness allows a dreamer to exert some degree of control over the content, the environment, and even their actions within the dream. So people who have lucid dreams that are called full lucid dreams essentially has these characteristics, that there's a full awareness that you're in a dream. There's the ability to manipulate the dream environment, characters, or narrative. There's a sense of clarity and vividness that can sometimes surpass waking reality. And often the dreamer can decide what they want to do next, such as flying, exploring, or even changing the dream setting. So this has definitely happened to me on a number of occasions. When I realize that I'm dreaming, sometimes it's in the middle of a very scary dream, like I'm being chased by people with weapons. And then all of a sudden I'll manifest the weapon because I know that I'm dreaming so I can defend myself or I'll be able to control my actions and run a certain direction away from the danger. So that would be a full lucid dream. There are semi-lucid dreams as well, though, which is when the dreamer has some awareness that they're dreaming, but the awareness is incomplete or less intense. They might recognize certain elements as part of a dream, but they might not be able to fully grasp the implications or retain control over their actions during the dream. So this is so interesting because people will often describe when they have lucid dreams that there's different levels of control, like I just alluded to, like a minimal control of their own actions, moderate control or high control. So the person might know they're dreaming, but might not be able to determine their actions much, all the way to being able to determine when they wake up. And that would be called a total control lucid dream. So lucid dreams can actually be really interesting there are actually some potential mental health benefits. And lucid dreaming has been associated with higher levels of creativity, enhanced creative problem solving, because it involves you consciously interacting with your dream environment, which gives you a unique space to think about ways to get out of a problem because there's no bounds in a dream. It's not tied to reality in the same way. Lucid dreams can also be a safe way to explore creative ideas. There's really no consequence in the same way that it would be in real life because you're just experimenting within a dream. Also, sometimes people think that it's a way to delve into deeper thoughts and insights about themselves in order to promote better mental wellness because you might gain access to subconscious material that you might not have access to during your conscious waking hours. So we're going to talk a little bit about how you might be able to induce lucid dreams for yourself if you've never experienced it, or if you have experienced it, how you might be able to induce lucid dreaming even more. 
So there's a few different techniques. One is called reality testing or reality checks. This is involving regularly checking whether you're awake or dreaming. So you're building the habit of questioning your reality, which is going to carry over into your dreams. This was covered a bit in the movie Inception, where the main character had essentially a top that he spun. And if the top never fell over, then it would mean he was dreaming. But if it did fall over, it would mean that he was in reality because in reality tops finally at some point topple over. So how to do this reality check? Well, throughout the day, just pause and ask yourself, am I dreaming? Perform a simple reality check, like looking at your hands or trying to push one finger through the other uh, hand's palm. If obviously uh, you can't do that, you're probably not dreaming. If you can do that, you might be dreaming. Another common check is to read a piece of text, look away, and then reading it again. In dreams, sometimes that text will change. In reality, it won't. Another way to practice and hopefully more frequently experience lucid dreaming is to use a mnemonic induction of lucid dreams. This was developed by Dr. Stephen LeBurge, and it involves using a mantra or an intention to increase the likelihood of becoming lucid in a dream. So before going to sleep, repeat a phrase like, I will realize I'm dreaming in your mind or out loud, and visualize yourself becoming lucid in a recent dream or a desired dream scenario. And this method leverages your intention and memory to help you recognize when you are in a dream state. And then another technique is called the wake back to bed. This is a method that involves waking up during the night and then returning to sleep after a short period of wakefulness, which can actually increase the likelihood of lucid dreaming. So set an alarm to wake up about five or six hours after you go to sleep. Then try to stay awake for 20 to 60 minutes, engaging in activities that might promote lucid dreaming, such as reading about lucid dreaming, or maybe repeating that mantra to yourself that I just mentioned, and then go back to bed with the intention of becoming lucid in your next dream. So this technique capitalizes on the fact that REM sleep, which is where most dreams occur, becomes longer and more frequent in your later stages of sleep. So waking yourself up after five or six hours of sleep, staying awake for a short period, and then trying to go back to sleep will increase the chances of a lucid dream. We're going to talk about some techniques on how to document potential lucid dreams and also how dream journaling can help with your mental wellness later on this podcast. So stick around. <laughs> Now let's move on to the Q&A portion of the podcast. So today's question is from listener Marie. And Marie says, is there any connection between lucid dreaming and potential mental health concerns? That's really interesting. I think what she might be alluding to is that there has been some limited research that suggests perhaps that individuals with certain kinds of psychotic concerns and symptoms might actually have more lucid dreaming. There's some support for that, and there is some connection. However, just because you have lucid dreams does not mean that you're at higher risk for any kind of psychotic illnesses. There is a potential link between frequent lucid dreaming and traits related to dissociation or certain forms of psychotic illnesses like hallucinations and delusions. And some studies in suggest that individuals with higher traits along the psychological spectrum particularly related to psychotic symptomatology, might experience lucid dreaming more often because of their tendency to blur the boundaries between reality and dreaming. But again, I want to be very clear that having more frequent lucid dreams does not necessarily mean that you're at more risk for more severe mental health symptoms at all. It's also associated with people who tend to be more creative, people who tend to be less inhibited in terms of their creative thinking. And so if you are wondering, though, if there is a connection and perhaps a set of psychological symptoms you need treatment for, then see a professional for more answers. Thanks so much for that great question, Marie. So let's move on to the actionable tip of the day. And today I want to talk about dream journaling. This is the practice of recording your dreams as soon as you wake up, and it's a powerful tool with a lot of benefits. Here are some reasons why you might want to keep a dream journal and the advantages it offers. First, it improves dream recall. It helps you to remember your dreams more vividly, analyze the themes, and understand yourself better, which brings me to the second advantage, which is an increase in self-awareness. Dream journaling is a way to to encourage introspection and self-reflection. And by analyzing your dreams, you can understand certain patterns that unfold in your thoughts, emotions, and subconscious mind. 
Third, as we've already alluded to, dream journaling can enhance creativity. Dreams often contain symbolic or surreal elements that actually inspire creative ideas. And having this dream journal will allow you to have all these creative ideas in one place that you can reference when you're thinking about creative problem solving at a different time. And one of the reasons why a lot of people keep dream journals is because they want to be able to have lucid dreams more. So yes, dream journals actually do facilitate lucid dreaming. It's one of the foundational practices, in fact, for inducing lucid dreams. By consistently writing down your dreams, you become more familiar with the patterns and themes within your dreams and makes it easier to recognize when you're dreaming and then ultimately to have control over those dreams. So here are the steps to start dream journaling. First, keep a journal nearby your bed. Place a notebook and a pen next to your bed on the nightstand so you can write down your dreams immediately upon waking. Second, record as much detail as possible. Write down everything you remember, even if it's just fragments or emotions, and include descriptions of the setting, people, action, and feelings. Even if it's incomplete, just spend five minutes or so documenting everything you remember from the nights before. Third, date your entries. Include the date with each entry, as well as the time of your journaling so you can track patterns or themes. Fourth, be consistent. Make dream journaling a daily habit. Even if you don't remember a dream, note down any sensations or thoughts you have upon waking. And fifth, review regularly. Periodically read through your journal to identify recurring themes, symbols, or emotions. Try this out. I'd love to hear how it works for you. Thanks everyone for tuning in to Mental Health Bites with me. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, there's plenty more where that came from. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon so you never miss an update. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and leave a comment below with your thoughts or any questions you have. Also, please share this video with your friends and family who might find it useful. Stay tuned for more awesome content and thanks so much for checking in today.